Welcome to the New York Comic Con and MCM Metaverse kickoff show presented by Alienware. I'm Grace Randolph. And I am Jackie Izawa. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Grace. Good morning, chat. We are in the home stretch. Final day, so, Jackie. Final day. It doesn't even seem like it's been four days or three days now. So No, I'm know. liking the virtual con, Jackie. I'm liking the virtual con. I, I am too. I mean, I, I I miss the crowds and everything, but I also don't miss the crowds. <laughs> so it's a very interesting experience <laughs> for me right now. But it is also my uh, my first New York Comic Con experience, thanks to you. So thank you. Are you thank enjoying you so it? Yes, absolutely. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm enjoying conversations with you and our guests more than anything. So I feel there are two yeah. conventions really: uh, San Diego and New York Comic Con. I feel those are the two big ones. Mm -hmm. so. I. I my first one was San Diego many, many, many years ago. And I was cosplaying Ada Wong from Resident Evil 4. Oh, that's awesome. I was so dumb. Those heels. No, I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> My first experience. But, oh, yeah. But yeah. Well, today we have a particularly active chat because everyone's very excited for Ed Boon to come on. Ah! Have, you, have you seen the new Mortal Kombat trailer? Yes, I have. Who hasn't? We, we got lots to talk about. We got yeah, it trended number one. You know, it trended even when they teased the trailer was coming, but then it trended. I was like, when I film my reactions, I don't look at Twitter right away. I'm trying to get it up really fast. And I was like, I know it's trending for sure. And then I check it while the video is rendering. And I was like, number one, that was amazing. And it was Melina. It wasn't yeah. even Rambo. Because yeah. people love My her. girl, yes. I love her. So, so uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Mortal Kombat 11, which just announced its ultimate edition, which is available starting November 17th. Uh, and Mortal Kombat, uh, the Combat Pack 2, which will be part of that ultimate edition, which we're going to be discussing specifically, features three new characters, uh, fan favorites, Rain and Melina, plus Rambo from the movies. <laughs> and here's Ed Boon to talk with us uh, himself. He is the co-creator of Mortal Kombat and the creative director of NetherRealm Studios. Good morning, Ed. Good morning. Thanks for Good having morning. me. That's a lot of fun. I, uh, <laughs> okay. You know, it's it's nice to have some semblance of a, of a Comic-Con, you know, in, in some capacity with, with everything that's going on. So I'm glad you guys uh, put this together. Oh, it's our pleasure. It was so great to have you here. Uh, you know, you go to, you really like going to the conventions. You know, I, 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 some people are like, oh, I don't want to interact with everybody. But I think that, you know, from, from Twitter, with your, you know, the way you play with fans and going to conventions, what do you like about the fan interaction? Um, you know, it's always just a good to get a sense of what they are talking about, what they like, what they want to see. Uh, they're, they're certainly not shy in terms of communicating what they want. <laughs> so that's the, uh, but it's, it's great just to have some kind of discourse with them. I, 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 I wish we could uh, be more uh, interactive with them, but the, there's so many, there's such a volume, uh, but you can get a sense of what the general uh, population uh, of fans want. I mean, those those fans are continuing to go strong um, over the years. Uh, congrats on eight million copies as of what October fifth, right? Um, that's a huge, huge success. Uh, what are what are your feelings about the continued success for a franchise that's been around for close to three decades? Um, it's it's I guess it's um, this is you know enthusiasm for the eleventh version of a game is. Um, is pretty is, is pretty unique, and so I really we don't we don't take that for granted. We take that very seriously. And if if people are coming along for the ride for us after decades, you know, uh, we could not be more grateful for it. So so uh, you know, um, it's 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 very uh, it's very humbling. Very uh, um, you know, there's a lot of people who work on this game. You know, hundreds of people work on this game. And so it's just very gratifying and uh, it's nice to be appreciated. Well, speaking of fandom, the Molina fandom is incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, some literally wept, literally wept tears of joy when she was announced for this new game, for the latest game on Thursday. Why do you think she's so popular? You know, Molina was one of the first characters from Mortal Kombat 1 and 2. There was Sub-Zero and Scorpion, and on the other side was Katana Melina. And they were, you know, the kind of classic um, adversaries 
uh, over the years of Mortal Kombat. And so we've represented, continued their story, and we hit pause on Melina just to create an appreciation. But we had no idea it would be this um, intense, this, uh, this. And so for years, we were getting pounded, you know, I want to see Melina again. <laughs> <laughs> and we just we just stretched that out, um, and we knew she was on her way. So I started, you know, teasing a little bit more. And uh, I wouldn't be doing that if I knew that she was eventually right. going to show up. So it was just a big build up, and you know, we played with it a little bit, and eventually we knew that we were going to be releasing a video like we did, and just let the floodgates loose. And that's what we witnessed was, was just this pent up um, anticipation for Melina. And all of a sudden online, we saw the results of it. Oh, it was a tsunami. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Although Melina stands out there. <laughs> um, actually, one of my, my one true pairings is the Sub-Zero Scorpion, which um, I just now realized because I binge watched all the movies last night just to prepare the hype for today. Um, I didn't realize you did the voice for Scorpion. <laughs> I was I like, did. what? What? Yeah, in, in back, it still does. In, yeah. Back, I just in the first Mortal Kombat, it was a very small production. Very, we didn't we we filmed in this back room. It was, you know, was, the team was four people. Uh, and so we didn't have professional voice actors. So I was the voice of Scorpion, Liu Kang, Jax, um, you know, a, a you know, a number of characters, I was just the one who was able to come up with different voices and uh, it just stuck. So the get over here was very spontaneous, very, um, you know, off the top of our heads and it just stuck 30 years later. So, Oh, it's great. When you do it, it like sends, when you, people see you do it, it sends like a chill down their spine. It's very cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I I was in a theater when Mortal Kombat 1, the first movie, uh, came out and everyone just like lost their minds. <laughs> it, it hit them so hard. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, also yesterday, I think you'd think it funny. It was funny. I was watching the Paul W.S. Anderson panel, Ed, and everyone was just putting the comments talking about Mortal Kombat. Yeah, he that really uh, that movie put him on the map. And yeah. um, and it's 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 really cool to see how much how much more other 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 games he covered and everything the resident evil and so it's uh it's a nice thing to be kind of uh you know part of launching of somebody's uh career so very very cool uh grace is it my turn i could help but bring that up Jeff, I know, no, no. Back and forth, but I'm no, I'm just a funny story. <laughs> I'm having the best time ever, so I'm like, where are we at? <laughs> yeah, we, but, we're fanning out a little bit. We're a little off the script, <laughs> just slightly, just slightly. Um, <laughs> uh, as co-creator of of Mortal Kombat, how involved are you with like every aspect of a game's design? Are you are you in like every single pocket, or you kind of just like see like the grand overview of everything? Uh, there are some parts that that I'm I'm involved a, a lot more with. Um, and, uh, you know, like, for instance, we have the story mode, very elaborate story mode, and there's a script that goes with it. And there's a lot of moving parts that have to kind of connect. You know, we want we want to see certain characters fight each other. And so we have kind of like these requirements and the story needs to accommodate it, um, you know, involved with um, or read the script. And um, so there's a bunch of game design, audio, you know, the the, you know, but like I said before, it's it's hundreds of people who work on it. You know, I, there's no possible way I can um, you know touch every single part. So we have we have people on the team who are absolute experts in their fields. You know, directors, animators, writers, you know, designers, and uh, we all kind of work in unison. I am part of the you know kind of big picture steering the ship. You know, um, you know they some people call it game director. Some people call it you know I'm. My title's creative director, so the overall kind of direction of it. But there are absolute experts in a number of fields that really uh, hold up, you know, significant portions of the game. It's it, it's quite a production. It's it's very similar to a movie production. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of people that we have on our team have worked on film, and and there's a lot of overlap with film and games these days. Well, someone who's working on this new game, 
The latest game is Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> who's doing the voice of Rambo. That's incredible. How did that come about? And how did he record his lines during a pandemic? Um, it came about, we've had, over the years, we've had a number of, of guest character. You know, we are all um, on our team. A lot of us grew up watching movies in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, depending on um, when they were born. And so we're big fans of those action movies. And so, you know, we had Alien, we had Predator, we had Freddy Krueger, we had uh, just a, a bunch of characters from, and Mortal Kombat 11 is, uh, continues with that. So we've had Robocop, we've had uh, Terminator, and now we have Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone as Rambo. And it's always that much more authentic when we use the original actor's voice. Uh, Sylvester Stallone was a great sport about it. You know, with, with today's pandemic and everything going on, you know, it's, you know, you, we have to make do with what we have. So, you know, to, to the magic of technology and remote recording and studios, and, you know, you do a lot of, um, a lot of the stuff via, via Zoom, we were able to get him to record remotely and our, our, our director basically coached him and gave him the lines and, and it worked out. It was, uh, it was a great, uh, a great uh, example of, you know, how to adapt to the situation we're all in. Did he record them at home or did he go to a studio or? I think he was at home. I'm not, I, I'm not. Awesome. Sure. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Do you happen to know if like maybe they were already fans of Mortal Kombat or being a voice for the game actually made them become a fan? Like you know, um, I, they, they range uh, quite a bit of range. You know, um, I don't think uh, Peter Weller was as as familiar. Um, uh, you know, he was he was a great sport and everything. And he kind of, you know, brought brought, you know, the Robocop, uh, you know, kind of spirit into it. Uh, but we you know, we, we, we show him a lot of of our previous games and see this is how it's going to work. And, you know, you're we have these intros and this is where, you know, these lines will be played and then they kind of get a good sense of it. But again, you know, in a studio, they're able to do a number of takes. So if we want them to enunciate a little bit more, we'll ask them to, you know, punch it up a little. Um, so there's a range of, you know, from very familiar to, you know, not quite as familiar. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. <laughs> Well, when I, when, I, when I was promoting that you were going to be on this show today, there was just so many requests of what to ask you. So I'm going to let you choose for the final question. All right. So you can either, you know, please give us an update on either the upcoming Mortal Kombat movie or Injustice 3. Uh, I guess I'll do the Mortal Kombat movie. Um, you know, there certainly is um, a script that I've read. And um, I've seen, um, you know, cuts. And, and um, but at the same time, as many movies are, um, I, I don't think I could predict uh, a release date or or, oh, or sure. change or plans or something because the movie industry has changed. You know, every week, I see another movie is is being moved, and everybody's just kind of adapting to the situation and the Mortal Kombat movie is, you know, part of that uh, whole, whole uh, situation. Um, so um, I've seen things, I've, I've, I've read scripts, I've, I've you know, um, so, but obviously I probably shouldn't, you know. Talk. <laughs> Sworn to secrecy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you have seen a cut. Yes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, very exciting. Yeah, I mean, that's just so great. I mean, I think, every, you know, it's really exciting. And I love that, you know, I think Mortal Kombat more than other games really is tied into pop culture and the, what, you know, what people are excited about, like dropping trailers for every character. And I'm just so excited to see you guys in the movie space. I mean, I love the animated movie that came out earlier this year, uh, but I'm very excited to see you in the live action space again with movies. Yeah, it's been um, amazing how how you know that animated movie did did, did amazing, and um, it's it, it's it's really cool to see Mortal Kombat in these different uh, forms of media. And you know, it's similar to like Injustice was 
you know, this video game, and then it became this really great selling comic book. Um, Tom Taylor did an amazing job. And uh, so it's nice to see our babies kind of graduate and go off into uh, go off to college. <laughs> uh, it's exciting times. Uh, and I can't wait. I personally love the live action movies. So I'm, I'm super duper excited for this one. So thank you um, so much, Ed. Uh, is there anything else you want to say before you head out? No, I just, you know, as, as you said, uh, the, 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 Players embracing this game has been has been amazing. We 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 I can't tell you how much we appreciate it and how um, uh, you know this 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 release of of the new content with you know Melina Rain and and, and Rambo has been um, has been such a ride for us and we're, we were just so pent up and waiting to kind of give that information and so things like this are great just because we get to tell people about it too and so we appreciate you. Uh, having me on here so we can kind of, you know, share the love with that. You, you oh, were so much fun to talk to, Ed. Yeah, Thanks. thank you so much for the conversation and for joining us this morning. Uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Thanks a lot, I appreciate it. Have a good one. All right, so Jackie, final day of the convention. Yes. Now we play a little game every day <laughs> where we spotlight three panels mm -hmm. and we pick, we see if we have any overlap. So far, we've had overlap every single day. Yes. Though I think Thursday, we've had two out of three. And every other day after that has been like one, right? Well, also, the stakes have been raised today, Jackie, because it's a, it's a shorter day because it's Sunday. So we have a smaller space to play in. So let's go. <laughs> let's see if we have any overlap. What's your first panel? I know we picked this one. We had to have picked this one. 945? No. Judge Dredd? <gasps> <laughs> I, I looked at it I was like, I swear she had to have like, chosen this. But uh, yeah, it's called uh, Judge Dredd Policing and Satire in, in 2020. Uh, Ooh, so I, I, and I just stopped at that. I was like, I have to watch it. It's Judge Dredd. <laughs> like, how can you not watch Judge Dredd? So um, that's going to be happening at 9.45 a.m. ET. And uh, I can just like kind of give like a brief overview um, I don't exactly know who's going to be talking, but it's, um, the, it's just about like the, the ideas of law and order and justice. Uh, critics and creators debate the pros and cons of the lawmen of the future. So it's going to be serious stuff. I think so. All right, but let's see if, we have, if, you, if you have this one. <laughs> okay. All right. 1.05 p.m. Nope. Main stage. You don't have this? Nope. Animaniacs? I thought about it. <laughs> I thought about it because it's such a huge staple of my childhood, but um, another title. We got in each of. other's heads, Jackie. We clearly yes. got in each other's heads. So at 1.05 p.m. main stage, the, the voice cast returns for Animaniacs, but they're not just reminiscing. They have a new season coming up on Hulu November 20th, and, that's, and they're going to drop all the episodes at once. I'm wondering if the show is as sophisticated as I remember it and if it was actually sophisticated as I do remember it. <laughs> It is all the time, right? As a child, I was blown away by its sophistication. And then you revisit and like, oh, I have different <laughs> feelings now. <laughs> um, okay, so my second What's your one. second? 4.45. Oh my God, Jackie, do we have no overlap today? Okay, what's your, what's this one? Again, the title got me. I didn't go that much further. Um, Saga Press, Can Mermaids Get Drunk? Well, that's an amazing no title. Idea, but I was just like, <laughs> actually has automatically hooked me. Um, sounds like it's going to be uh, sci-fi and fantasy writers. Uh, they delve into possibilities and impossibilities of how their world building works. And I love when people talk about how they create stories, how they create worlds. And um, so that, that title just sold me. <laughs> well, yeah, how can you not tune in and find out the answer to that question? Uh, All right. Yeah. So I have this one, 1.40 p.m. What We Do in the Shadows? Not on mine. Oh my God. All right, so what we do in the shadows, obviously uh, a film, a, a TV version of the film from Taika Waititi uh, and the cast and producers are gonna be there. That's also airing on Hulu. Seasons one and two are available right now. So you can visit in, uh, check in, stop by, see what they're up to. Mm -hmm. All right, third one, moment of truth. Okay. Third one, this one is um, pretty near and dear to my heart. I think you're going to know immediately as soon as I say it. So it's at 9.25 ET, PM, obviously. You had no overlap today, Jackie. This is incredible. Today is the okay. day. Yes. That's how much um, variety is on Sunday. Uh, history of diversity in comics. 
Oh, that's lovely. Yes. Yeah. So that's super duper important to me. Um, I'm of Chinese Japanese descent. And so um, you talk about history and diversity and representation and of, of gender and LGBTQ plus identity. So that's yes. All the yes I think from it's me. Wonderful. I think comics are making major comics, animation, everything's making major stride in those stride in those areas. Mm -hmm. All right. So Mine is a silly panel. I picked okay. 1140 AM, Happy Halloween, Scooby-Doo. Uh, they have a brand new animated movie that's actually out right now, uh, available on DVD or digital. They're gonna show you the first eight minutes of the movie and they have the voice cast. They have Frank Welker who does Scooby-Doo and Fred, uh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, who's in the animated movie, will be there as well. But the reason I thought uh, you know, people tuning in might be particularly interested in this panel is Matthew Lillard is back as Shaggy. Yeah. And he's going to be on there talking about uh, his voice work. Yeah. So we would have been two out of two because I was eyeing Scooby-Doo and had a oh, yes. yes. But I thought, ah, oh, if she potentially could choose those, I should just back out <laughs> and choose like others. Yeah. But the fact that we were able to pick six panels shows how much is going on today. Exactly. Yep. So I hope. Where can people look at the schedule if they want to make this decision for themselves? Yeah. Uh, Findthemetaverse.com. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to New York Comic Con. And you want to stay right here because this uh, YouTube video is going to switch right over to the next panel. And it's going to be the best American science fiction and fantasy, which spotlights upcoming uh, really high quality uh, fiction writers. So you're not going to want to miss that. It's the first panel of the day. And it's going to start in less than five minutes right here right now yes so right. I, I believe that's up for, for us today grace yeah, thank, thank you, you so much me, Jack. yeah it's so much fun with you yeah you are so wonderful and i thank you again for this opportunity thank oh, you broadcast as well <laughs> yes thank you broadcast team for getting up so early at 4 30 in the morning every day all right everyone have a great rest of your sunday enjoy